Reasonable and unreasonable. What about the word? You know, you want to be careful who you listen to. And when you listen, document for yourself. Well, document from where? From the Word of God. It's that simple. Children can understand it. Surely you can. And I'm not saying that to talk down to anyone. It's in the simplicity that Christ taught. Anyone can understand it. If you just take your time. And hey, if somebody brings you a message other than that that is written, you got, they've got a problem, okay? And if you listen to them, you can get in trouble. I want you to open your Bibles to next to the last book in the New Testament. Make it read, if you would, there. Um, the great uh, book of um, Jude. Just before the great book of Revelation. And, we're, you know, all must understand that Satan will try to mislead you coming out the gate if he has an opportunity. This is why, as it is written in Genesis chapter 6, when he failed to be successful in destroying woman, he sent fallen angels. The Hebrew word is nephilim, napha from fallen. They left their first habitation, that is to say heavenly with God, rather than to be born of woman, to seduce woman. And it's well recorded in, in Genesis chapter 6. We pick up this subject in the New Testament in this book of Jude, and it is still Satan's roots that bring to pass false teachers, some of them in ignorance and some of them deliberately. So let's pick it up, if we may, with verse 6 of the great book of Jude. And it reads, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains unto darkness unto the judgment of the great day. In other words, they're doomed. Why? They disobeyed God right from heaven. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, that means male going after male and female after female in, in the Greek language, are set forth for an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Verse 8, Likewise. Also, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak e evil of dignities. Anytime you bring something out that is, should be respected, they scoff at it. Just like you have many that openly try to remove God's name from everything anymore. You know, they, they make light of everything, try to twist everything. And you'll always have golfers, People goofing off, they'll say, oh, yes, that makes sense, that's logical. Well, it isn't logical. Verse 9, yet Michael, the archangel, it even goes this high. When contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, does not bring against him a rallying accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke thee. In other words, don't ever argue with Satan. You know why? You'll lose. You don't have time to argue with him. Say the same thing Christ did. Get out of my life in the name of Jesus. Be out of here. Go. And I mean get rough. What do you do to little ants that bother you? You stomp them. Okay? You don't put up with nonsense from evildoers. And there'll be some who'll say, well, that doesn't sound very Christian. Well, if you want to be a Christian, you better learn how. Okay? because it's going to get worse before it gets better, as far as false teaching. Verse 10, But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beast. In those things they corrupt themselves. I want you to make a note of this word brute, and I suppose that's why the translators wrote a letter to you in the original King James. The word um, brute is in the Greek language is a logos. Okay? The, the, the first letter of the alphabet, uh, omega, 
and then simply the word logos, which is word, okay? But it means with the A affixed, it's illogical. It's not natural. It doesn't make sense, okay? In other words, it is, it is unreasonable, and their way of speaking is unreasonable, okay? Uh, that makes it negative, in other words, and that's negative talk. You don't have time to listen to negative talk. Don't, uh, even as, why, why was Satan arguing for the bones of Moses? Because Moses was the lawgiver, and Satan doesn't like law, okay, because it comes from God. It keeps you straight. And many might say, well, you, you even have some Christians that are so misled, they'll say, well, the law was done away with. Oh, it's all right to steal. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt do no murder. If that's okay. I don't think it's been done away with. As a matter of fact, it shows their ignorance of God's Word that they've never read Matthew chapter 5, where Jesus said, I don't change one jot of the law, not one iota in the Greek. So where does all this come from? False teaching that that's not logical, that that um, is unreasonable. And what he's warning you here is pay attention in the world. Don't be misled. Hey, people will lay you out and have you for dinner if you let them, okay? They'll take advantage of you. Document everything that you put in your mind to follow God from His Word. That's why He wrote this letter to you. You have a destiny. You have a purpose. He wrote the letter to you telling you how to be successful, how to be happy, and how to find contentment while in even in these flesh bodies. So don't listen to, to um, those that uh, would bring to pass. The, the word in the Greek is pronounced al-ogos. Al Ogos is simply A and Logos. Logos usually meaning word. Okay, bad word. Don't listen to it. Okay, and then uh, continuing on with um, with uh, verse eleven, woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward. Oh, Balaam, he was a pretty good preacher, but he all he was in it for was the money. Okay, that's all he thought about. And perished in the gainsaying of Cory. These are spots in your feast of charity. There are spots even at Passover. They'll show up with bad teaching if you're not careful. Out on the wings and out on, you know, you want to hear some good stuff? Well, listen to me for a minute. Oh, well, is it from the Word? No, it's something I dreamed. Okay, or it's my interpretation. You want to do your own interpreting as best you can. All you need is the tools we teach you to have, okay? When, when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water. In other words, they're empty. You're, ne they're ne you're not going to gain anything from false teaching. Carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. In other words, they are allegos. In, in modern English, we say all they are is a bunch of hot air, okay? It just doesn't get you anywhere. And, it is, it, and, and the danger, beloved, is false teaching throws you totally off guard as to what the Word truly says about the, the communion or those events that consummate the end of this age. What you're supposed to be, for example, that the false Messiah comes before the true Messiah does. It's important that you know that or you're going to be deceived. And that's not a good sign for a Christian to wear is deception. When he wrote you a letter telling you how not to be deceived, how not to listen to that that is not logical, that that doesn't make sense. Okay, So, uh, so it is. Turn, turn now with me to the book of Peter. Just before this, we're going to go to 2 Peter. Verse 
bearing in mind that in this second Peter in chapter two, where we're going to go here, the third chapter is where he tells you about all three earth ages, so you're not deceived. What happened in the first earth age and why scientists can prove this earth is millions of years old? Because it is. And the Bible states it is. Okay. But we're just before that, and it's one of those warnings he gives us that you can follow whereby it prepares you. Okay, chapter 2, let's, we'll just start with verse 1 here. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. I mean, I mean can, can everybody understand that? You've got false teachers out there. That's why you want to check this man or any other man out. How do you do that? In the Word. Don't let somebody get away with re some one verse Charlie get away with reading one verse and then talking about his family for an hour. Okay? That's not biblical. That's not God's Word. That's His Word. Or hers. Okay? Um, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. That's what you're dealing with. It's serious. It's very serious. And some people wonder why they have trouble in their families. It's amazing. Really amazing. Some people wonder, why doesn't God bless me? Well, do you know Him? Or do you just pretend? Do you play church? Or do you really get into His Word? That's a good question, isn't it? What is your destiny? What is your purpose? Do you know it? Have you ever read Mark 13 that tells you what it is you're going to do at the very end? And if you were to refuse, it would be unpardonable? Ever read it? It's there. He wrote it to you, if you have eyes to see. Verse 2, And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be even evil spoken of. They don't know come here from Sikkim. Okay? That's how much Bible they know. They're not founded. So you need to get your roots planted. It's not that difficult, beloved. It's simple. Very simple. The Word of God, especially in the simplicity, again, I state that Christ taught. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words, that means fabricated lies, okay, make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. God's not overlooking any of this. That's, what all, that's all that means. You know, we've got the book of life up there. And it's, it's like when God gets up in the morning, that's the plan of the day. Okay, He takes down the log. And everything is logged in. And you know something? Your name is there. And what you do... Good or bad, both go there. The good, I hope you have enough, it erases what's bad, okay? Otherwise, you do have a problem. But then the beauty of Christianity is you repent, and He erases all of it. He gives you a clean start. Why? You're His child, and He loves you. He wants you to have that clean start. Don't listen to false teachings. Get you a foundation in the Word of God and stand on it. Our main foundation is Christ. He's our rock and He's immovable. You can't be moved when you're on Him, meaning His doctrine, His teachings. Well, what does that mean? He's the living Word. The Word became flesh among us. That's what His teaching is in the simplicity in which He taught. And, and what, what, what a teaching it is to bring us peace of mind and prosperity, success in this life today. That means finding happiness. And when you find that, never turn loose of it and don't let somebody snow you, okay? And, and, uh, and so it is, okay? I want to skip on down, if we may, to about verse 9. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of the temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. The Lord knows how to do it. 
the moment you repent or the moment you do what's right, He separates you. You can be right in the middle of the storm. And I'll say it again, just as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego walked in the fiery furnace, heated seven times hotter than necessary. They weren't even singed. Why? Who was walking with them? It was the Lord. He walked with them and protected them. The Lord knows how to protect you wherever you are. doesn't matter. He knows how. And he, as long as you have that destiny and that purpose and you're living for Him to make a difference in people's lives, He's going to protect you. Verse 10, But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanliness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. They don't mind cursing God. And I'm not talking about just somebody that has a habit of cussing, like most Marines do, okay? Unfortunately, sometimes. Uh, but I'm talking about people that deliberately and seriously denounce God. That's, that's a way to head for big trouble, okay? And, and then you know what they'll do? They'll get off to themselves and get in a bind and say, I wonder why God never blesses me. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? You don't, you don't do anything for Him, I guarantee you, He's not going to do anything for you. Well, what does He want mainly for me? He wants you to love Him, that's all. Is that difficult? Of course it isn't when you figure what He's done for us. It's easy to love Him and what He has put a, made available for us. And, and that's the main thing He wants, as it's written in Hosea 6.6. 6. And you know something? It's ironic, but the very word we're utilizing here in the Greek applies in that sixth chapter and the sixth verse of Hosea. He says, What pleases God is your love. He doesn't want your burnt offerings. He wants you to love Him while you're His child. That's the main thing, okay? Uh, but you have these that will, I mean, they'll talk up a storm. Don't let them catch your ear. Don't let them tickle your ear. Verse 11, Whereas angels which are, which are greater in power and might bring not riling accusations against them before the Lord. Don't argue with that that is negative. Tell it, do you know what you do when it comes into your life? Order it out. Get tough with it. Get rough. You know, sometimes if you can't do it any other way, go to the back door and start you a cemetery in the backyard for negative thought. and Throw it over your shoulder and get rid of it in the name of Jesus Christ. Bury it. Otherwise, it will fester inside of you and cause you to worry, be jealous maybe, or something of that nature. It will eat you alive and you won't find happiness. So throw it out. Get rid of it. Okay? Don't let Satan toy with you. You're bigger than that. The biggest mistake you can ever make is to argue with him rather than bluntly nip it in the bud. Okay, verse 12. But these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Do you know what that word brute is again? Have you forgotten? I told you what it is. It is amiga, the first letter of the Greek alphabet, A, and logos. And it is pronounced algos, which is to say it's irrational. They don't make any sense. If something doesn't make any sense, don't listen to them. They will lead you down Primrose Lane, and there will be no way back out except through the Savior. Okay. Um, I don't know, how busy are you? Do you have time to listen to junk? There's a lot of it out there in the world, my friend. And there is, there, you know, as an example, would you believe we have an idiot that is trying to sue that in, in the dedication to the second term of our president, he doesn't want the word God or a preacher there. 
Can you imagine that? In this nation, in God we trust, one nation under God, that we have an idiot like that? And you, well, you might offend him. I could care less. I will offend him right to his face because, you know, he has no business. If he wants to get off in a, hey, you know, it's real simple. If you don't want to hear God's name, go somewhere and bury yourself, you know. Get out of my sight, you know. Get away from good people. Don't listen to them. Well, and, and beloved, that is truly politically correct, okay, because it's morally correct. Don't listen to those brutes, okay. That means anything that doesn't make common sense. Don't listen to it. You're smarter than that. You know, uh, common sense is a gift from God. It's something that you're naturally given. And you say to yourself, that, that just doesn't quite reach from A to B for me. And you're smart enough to know there's probably something wrong with it. So you better investigate. Think, for, learn to think for yourself, all right? He says, don't listen to, did he say maybe these false teachers are coming? And he, he's not talking about a neighbor. He's talking about even big preachers, okay? Got a name for themselves. Paul spoke of them in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and he said, hey, I'm kind of crude in speech compared to some of their fancy Dan stuff, but I can jerk the carpet out from under them anytime I want to with truth, the simplicity that is in Christ. So remember that. Don't listen to nonsense. Verse 13, And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings whilst they uh, feast with you. In other words, they claim to be Christian. Feasting with you means they'll even take Holy Communion with you. They will, they'll take Passover with you. They'll take every advantage they can to gain. Usually they can't get an audience of their own, so they're going to go somewhere where people are gathered. It's just that's, that's the way the cookie crumbles, friend. Don't listen to nonsense from this man or any other man. Well, how do I know? The letter that God has written you. He tells you what they will do, okay, if you give them that opportunity. 14, having eyes full of adultery, and they cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they uh, have uh, exercised with covetous, covetous practices, cursed children. Um, they mess with the bride of Christ. Try to get her to so confused she'll follow another, which is to say the false messiah. I mean, they, they'll do everything they can to confuse you. You don't have to study Revelation. You're going to be gone. If some preacher ever tells you that, mark him off the list. He is so ignorant. Well, are you judging him? No. Revelation tells you how it's going down. Do you know what the word revelation in whatever language you want to translate it to means? It means the uncovering or the unveiling or that that brings you to knowledge. And you'd let some preacher tell you you don't need knowledge? I think not. I think you could be had if that's the case. Satan could talk you into anything. You need the whole Word of God. You need to understand it. Am I telling you you need to be an authority, a scholar that uh, has perfect recall? No. But you need to have a working knowledge of God's Word for yourself, okay? Uh, they will beguile people that are not founded. Why? They don't know any better. And I'm going to tell you something. Do you know why people, I'm just going to just, we might as well just get to it. Do you know why so many people can be misled so easily? They've heard so many sayings passed down, down through the years of this one said that and that one said that. They don't know what is biblical. Do you know when we're teaching and, um, and, and I state the apple is not even mentioned in Genesis 3 as far as Eve having taken an apple. They will run and get their Bibles. They will run and get their Bibles and say, well, I'll prove him wrong. And they run to find Eve and the apple, and guess what? 
All she had was a fig leaf covering her. Okay, no apple. And they're shocked. But you need to know the truth and the simplicity of it. I'm not knocking people, but that's why people can be so easily misled. They've listened to junk without actually simply reading the Word of God for themselves, absorbing it, having it for their foundation so that you can say, uh-uh, don't try to take me there, my friend, and uh, know God's Word, all right? No, no truth when you hear it. Um, verse 15, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam. That's that old preacher that liked to preach for money. The son of Bother, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb ass, speaking with men's, man's voice, forbade the madness of the prophet. In other words, he was so, this prophet was so ignorant. And do you know something? In his mind, he was doing what God told him to do that God had the donkey to stop and say, can't you see that angel standing in front of us that's not going to let us go? In other words, God let the donkey have more sense than the man, and he was supposed to be a prophet. Kind of, you know, showing you what, well, is that kind of humorous? Yes, it is. I, I think it is. And it lets us know that man can sure be wrong, even though he was, he was a pretty well-known prophet. But he was wrong because God told him, if thus or thus, then if they send for you, you can go and take their money. He didn't wait. When it come early morning, he saddled that donkey and he headed to get that money. Okay? And that's why God stopped him uh, short. Because God, he wasn't following God's orders. You need to, beloved. You know, this is real simple. If you want God's blessings to where you prosper in life and you find peace of mind. Hey, He makes the difference. He can make you successful or He can jerk the rug out from under you and everything you touch will find a way out somewhere, okay? I mean, He can find more expenses for you to go the other way with than you can say amen over. Well, I don't know if I believe that or not. Well, hey, check yourself out. All right? It's real easy and it's real simple. And then follow God and love Him and see how He can plug those leaks up in the bucket. Okay, where your savings start kind of adding up. Do you know I'm quoting scripture right now? Quoting from an old man and a minor one of the minor prophets, okay? His name was his his name was Haggai. Um, what a teacher he was, okay? They will mislead you, and you need to really be warned, and you need to stay warned. I mean, not logical. Doesn't make sense. Something wrong, friend, when that happens. Pull yourself back. Take another look at it, okay? For uh, I'm going to go on, if I may, with uh, 17, 16, but was, no, verse 17. These are wells without water. I mean, what good is a, what do you have a well for? Well, I have a well because I need water. Well, if it doesn't have any water in it, what are you doing with it? Okay? It's worthless, in other words. Clouds they are, um, clouds that are carried with a tempest to whom the midst of darkness is reserved forever. That's all it's going to amount to. For when they speak great swelling words, they brag a lot of vanity, telling you how great they are. They allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome of the same, he is brought into bondage. If an evil person Somebody that is not logical overcomes you and has you seeing what they see, then it's contrary to the Word of God. And are you going to expect God to bless you still yet? Don't kid yourself. That's silly. God is not going to bless you. He is not going to hear you. And you're going to be on your own. And it's kind of cold and lonely out there without your Father. Especially 
And something else people forget about her father. He says, I know what you have need of. And after you do it right, I'll give it to you. So what does that mean? What does he mean? After you're right, that means after you serve me, I'll give it to you. But you've got to serve him first. Well, what does it mean to serve him? Tell him you love him. That's not difficult, is it? To declare your love for him. I mean, he created the whole earth and the universe. And here, man is doing such great things, you know. He, seven years it took the little putt-putt to get to, to uh, Saturn, to one of its little moons there. Seven years. Remarkable for man. God put the moon there just like that. God put Saturn there just like that. Titan is the name of the little moon. And, you know, you're going to have a lot of pictures of it in today's newspaper. I haven't seen it, but I'm sure they'll be there of uh, what it looks like there, you know. But, and man is so excited because he finally made a putt-putt. I'm, I'm overstating this, all right? I mean, it's great, our rocketry and everything. But God put the moon there, you know. That's, that's what's remarkable. He put Saturn there. He put this earth where it is. He's, and he is your father. Boy, can you, be, can you have a reason to love him? You really can. So there we have the negative. There, there we have um, uh, alogos, which is to say irrational, doesn't make sense. So let's take this same um, book of Peter and let's go to 1 Peter chapter 2. And we're going to pick it up with First Peter chapter 2, verse 1, let's read it. Wherefore, laying aside all malice, get it out of your life, and all guile, anything of that nature, get it out of your life, you don't need it, and hypocrisies and envians and all evil speakings. That means words. You do not need them. Verse 2. As newborn babes desire the sincere, I repeat, sincere, that's unadulterated, milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. Now, this word, word, here, is... Um, is pronounced log ex, log, log ek us, log at us, which is almost, that's what our word logic comes from. That's the only logical thing that makes sense is to get rid of that that is negative and get right down, do you know what milk, who takes milk? Babies, okay? Uh, some of us adults still like milk, but that's, that's what it means, basically, is the beginning. Get down there in the milk of the Word, but let it be sincere. Don't let it be something somebody has adulterated. Don't let it be something that somebody has twisted. Log exos means it's logic. It's logical. It makes sense to get all that guile out of your life, all the false teachings, and get right down to the basics of Christ's teachings. Repent, be forgiven, and be blessed. Okay? Be blessed. Uh, verse 3. If so be, ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. For to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. In other words, Christ is the chief cornerstone. A lot of people reject him. How can you have the building without a chief cornerstone? You can't. Your life would be a failure. I mean, a negative. Verse 5, Ye also as lively stones, do you see what he's calling you if you've done this? Living stones is what that means, being translated. 
ye also as living stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable, being pleasing to God by Jesus Christ. That's when you get blessings, beloved. That's why God has reason to bless you. Who do you think he's going to bless in this world? Somebody that goes against him? Or somebody that loves him and follows him? Naturally, he's going to say, I'll take care of that one. You're going to get, you're going to get the goodies, okay? I don't want that to be the reason you do it. But that's the outcome thereof. Why? That's the way a father is. He loves you. He cares about you. He owns everything. He's got plenty to share. He's, and, and he can cause anything to happen as he sees fit. He doesn't put on sideshows, but do you think he can't help you in your life? My, my, my. Of course he can. And you're a living stone in his, in his house. Six. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. You won't be confused if you truly believe on him and study the milk of his word. If that's where you need to start, you get started, okay? You get into that milk. You get your foundation, and you get God's blessings, and your life will change. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. In other words, he's the boss. The one you made fun of, he's the head man, okay? Where do you think that will leave you if you went against him? Not too good, not too swift, friend. And a stone of stumbling, it can, you know, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word. That means they don't have any knowledge of the word. Being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Now, listen, the greatest time that Christ will be a stumbling stone is when the Antichrist is here and people haven't listened. And they will believe he is Christ. Why? He can snap his fingers and lightning come down from heaven. Purr, in the Greek tongue, Revelation chapter 13, it's written that he'll perform miracles in the sight of people on this earth. They're going to go bonkers, friend, over him, thinking he is Christ. But you that are fed know better. That's why you can stumble if you're not careful. He expects you, as it's written in Mark 13, to stand up and be a champion of your people, be somebody, be a Christian, a real one. Verse 9, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness unto his marvelous light. He opened your eyes where you could see the truth. What a great nation we do have, and many people don't realize that the ten tribes of Israel traveled north over the Caucasus Mountains, were later called Caucasians, settled Europe, and then the great Americas, and they wonder where the true house of Israel is. But, well, we just happened to be a superpower. Oh, how did we get that way? How did we, how, how did we come to be that precious nation, the superpower of all superpowers? And you might say, well, I don't know. Well, reach in your hand, get, reach in your pocket and pick out a coin, pull it out, and what does it say? In God we trust. And we do. It's not an accident that God blesses this nation and who all we come in contact with and the fact that we will always control our gates. It was written to you. Precious nation, peculiar people. Why? Because they're blessed of God. Have you ever seen a place that borders change so much? And I know we have an international ministry, and I know I offend some when I talk like this, but Abraham was to be a blessing to all nations, plural. And so are we. It's good for everybody. Okay, uh, We show that 
with what's happening in Iraq even at this time, giving freedom to people that have known sure death to think for themselves in the past 30 years, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained that mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war after the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. Don't listen to false stuff, okay? Let it be honest. Honest from what? You can always count, if it's from the Word of God, you can count on it being honest. Okay, turn with me to just before uh, Hebrews along in there somewhere, let's find Timothy. Let's go to the book of Timothy. And let's make it 2 Timothy. Timothy is a doctrinal book, meaning it gives us doctrine on how we're supposed to live, how we're supposed to act. And um, we're going to pick it up, if we may, right with verse 14. Let's go right where we want to. Verse 14 of chapter 2, 2 Timothy. And chapter 2, verse 14 reads, Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. In other words, don't mess around with words that don't profit anybody. It's nonsense. It doesn't make sense. It's not logical. But speak that that does make sense and, and subverts the hearers into accepting Jesus Christ, into following Him, into seeing the simplicity in which Christ taught. Don't even give the time of day to those that would bring forth an unprofitable sayings, unprofitable words. Well, what word is profitable? God's word. What God teaches, the doctrine that Christ brings forth. Verse 15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. What does it mean to rightly divide? Beloved, this is the secret to knowing how to study. Subject, object, what does that mean? Well, what is the subject? What is he talking about? Secondly, who is it written to? That's important. And what time period was it? And is it prophetic or is it a doctrinal book? Is it a book that... And, and in rightly dividing the word, you have the four W's there, who, what, when, and where, okay, just talking about. And you rightly divide that word by paying attention to who it's written to. Is it written to Israel or is it written to Gentiles? It's good writing either way, okay, because God loves all of his children. But it makes more sense to you. This is why I could... This is why I recommend the Companion Bible, because it outlines for you every chapter in God's Word on who it's talking to, what it's talking about, and so forth. Okay. So you must rightly divide the Word. As a matter of fact, I had a question on television. Who is the elect lady? Well, and I knew they were talking about the book of Peter when Peter wrote, or John, rather, wrote, to the elect lady of Christ, meaning God's election, okay? His bride, in other words. It's a Christian saying, figure of speech, that not too many people would understand if you weren't Christian. But that's who that book is written to, to God's elect. So you should get more from it. That's why John would say to you in love, little children, it's the last time. I have told you, even in the world today, there are Instead of Christ, that means people that claim to be Christian and they're not really. But I must tell you that the Antichrist shall come. That's the main one. That's Satan prosing as Christ. And he continues on. He was telling the elect lady. 
So you rightly divide the word. And then when you go to Mark 13, and it speaks to Christians, and it tells you very clearly there that when this false one comes, you're going to be delivered up, and you're not to premeditate what you'll say beforehand, but you will speak what God gives you at that moment so that other people have an opportunity to hear. To hear. That's rightly dividing the word, okay? It's paying attention to who it's written to, what time it covers, whether it's prophecy, whether it's doctrine. You know, doctrine tells you how to have a happy family. The book of Ecclesiastes is a book of doctrine that you rightly divide. It's written to the man that walks under the sun. That means you in a flesh body. It's telling you how to be happy in these flesh bodies and what you should and should not do in these flesh bodies, but mainly how to be successful in these flesh bodies, how to find peace of mind while even in this flesh body. That's rightly dividing the word. Do not, he, he, in this letter, he has given you everything. In Mark 13, he says, Behold, I have foretold you all things. Then he doesn't ask it, but I will. Have you read it? You know, it's all there. You don't need anything else. So get about your father's business, rightly dividing that word. Uh, and study to show yourself approved. You know, this word approved in the Greek, it's uh, how do you show yourself approved? This, this word in the Greek is dakamos, and it means a precious metal after it's assayed. Do, do you know how they assay uh, ore? They put the fire to it, okay? they melt all the precious stuff out of it and count it. So sometimes he has to melt that that is precious out of you and kick the old slag off to the side and get right down where you're approved. Okay. So sometimes when God is correcting you, he, God doesn't correct people he doesn't love. So sometimes when God's correcting you, that's a good time to thank him. Okay, kiss the paddle and say, thank you, Father, and get about his business. Show yourself assay. That means real stuff, okay? The real thing. What am I talking about? A child of God that has rightly divided the Word of God and is definitely going to receive God's blessings. You see, that's what this is about, beloved. This is what I'm trying to convey to you. I want you to be blessed. I want you to have peace of mind. I want you to be the happiest people in this world. You should be, because you're on the rock, and that rock is Christ. And He knows He can count on you. When that day comes, that you won't let Him down, you will make a difference. You will make a stand, because you're a child of God, and you're not ashamed of it. Verse 16, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Don't listen to it. Throw it out of your house, okay? And their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymeus and Philetus. Uh, do you know what they did? Verse 18, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faithfulness of some. Okay. False teaching. Beware of it. Be careful of it. It'll lead you down Primrose Lane, and sometimes it's hard to find the road back. Okay. False teachings. It'll get you. Okay. But, and it's so easy to rightly divide the word. And you know what you always find out? It amazes. He loves us. He wants the very best for us. So don't take, don't play second fiddle to God. You're His child. Act like it. Expect blessings. Serve Him. Study the Logos, okay? If you've noticed, we have followed through this lecture with the word Logos in one form or the other, positive and negative. And I could quote for you 
I guess I will. First John, the St. John, first verse, in the beginning was the Word, Logos. The Logos, the Word, was with God, and the Word, Logos, was God. So you see, this is important to us. It's our life. It's what we live on. But there again, in life, there is a negative and there's a positive. So stay with the positive and be blessed. It makes such a better life in serving Him. Rightly dividing the Word of God, which separates you from those that do not, those that don't know any better, that makes you real special in His eyes so that He can bless you and your family. And you know something? He blesses those you even touch when you're really in standing with Him, rightly dividing that word. Heavenly Father, thank You, Father, for the privilege of serving You. Thank You, Father, for Your precious word, the Logos, Father. Father, keep our minds sharp and on guard, especially in this generation, for that that is false, and make room only for that that is true, and give us the ability, and we thank you for the authority that we have to cast out that that is negative in Jesus' precious name. Amen. The Mark of the Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the Mark of the Beast? Many false teachers would have you believe it will be a tattoo on your forehead or a computer chip implanted under your skin. It is getting late in the game. You need to know what the mark of the beast is. As it's written in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, many will be deceived. There is no need for you to be deceived. Christ said in Mark 13, 23, Behold, I have foretold you all things. Jesus indeed told us how not to be deceived, and Pastor Arnold Murray takes you on a step-by-step -step study of God's Word concerning this critical subject, the mark of the beast. The telephone call is free. The CD is free. We don't even ask for the shipping and handling. It is free as well. All you need to do is call 800-643-4645 to request your one-time, one-per-household copy of the Mark of the Beast. You may also request your free CD by mailing your request to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Don't be deceived by Satan. It means God may judge it to hell. So this mortal must put on immortality. That, that kind of answers it for you, does it not? Okay. Uh, Karen from Canada, I have a question for you. Do you have to be rebaptized in order to be saved? No. If you were baptized and you were baptized in the name of Jesus and you knew, the, because the baptism is between you and the Lord and to he does the saving, okay? So it's there. But you're not saved if you have sinned and have not repented for that sin. His job is done. So when you repent, you fall back under salvation. Baptism doesn't have anything to do with, uh, with repentance necessarily after you're already baptized. If a person feels they should be baptized again, there is no harm done. Peggy from Virginia, I have learned so much from your teaching and I look forward to learning even more. My question is, in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 and 12, at Christ's return, exactly what elements will be destroyed if people's souls are not done away with until the lake of fire? Well, it, it isn't people that are destroyed, it's elements. Or, or I would rather translate it even rudiments, but the Greek word is stachion, which means, uh, I suppose I could translate it maybe easier by saying only evil things are destroyed right at that time. Uh, Satan's office of uh, Antichrist is thrown into the lake of fire. It's destroyed at that time. His one world political system is destroyed at that time. He will never have it again. And I'm, I'm pulling from Revelation chapter 19 uh, uh, in the closing verses. Uh, everything evil is destroyed. And we will have a time of a thousand years of teaching. And then he's released again for a short season. Brian from Oklahoma. My name is Brian, and uh, I'm from Oklahoma. Seems this sounds familiar. My question to you is when the Lord put a mark on Cain and cast him out from where he was in the land of Nod, how far did Cain go, and is there any verses to help document this? 
Well, history, and history does. I, I make it, and this is, don't ask me to document it in the Bible, you can't, that he stopped short of Mongolia and he became a, a tribe of people and they had a king that they called uh, King Kagan. A G instead of a J, but uh, it doesn't matter. It's a still the same Hebrew word, Cain, King Cain. And it was a people that migrated and migrated and migrated a little further north with each generation. And uh, they are still very much in the world, okay, and uh, are still very prevalent. But you would have to study a little bit of history to get into that, okay? You might look up Kagan and see where you end up with. I don't know if um, you may not have any luck with it. Wanda from Georgia. What does elect woman of God mean? I'm going to have to assume that you're talking about the epistles of John and maybe of, of uh, Peter, where he writes God's the elect woman, meaning the bride of Christ when Christ comes. That's why it is addressed, and it is written to God's election. That is to say, those that know the false Christ is coming first, those that know what it is that they are supposed to do, and they're God's elect. Everyone has free will and has an opportunity, whomsoever will. Out of time. Hey, you know what? I love you all a great deal because you enjoy studying our Father's Word chapter by chapter and verse by verse, okay? You do learn more when you let God do the teaching from His very letter, the letter He's written to you. And uh, the main thing is it makes His day when you study His letter. And when you make His day, He's going to make yours. We are brought to you by your tithes and offerings. If we've helped you, you help us keep coming to you. Once you do that, most important though, this. You stay in His Word. Every day in His Word is a good day, uh, even, even with trouble. You know why? Jesus is the living Word. Hearing God's Word with understanding will change your life. We hope you have enjoyed studying God's Word here on the Shepherd's Chapel Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you would like to receive more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer contains the Mark of the Beast audio tape, our monthly newsletter with a written Bible study, a tape catalog, and a list of written reference works available through Shepherd's Chapel. To request our free introductory offer by telephone, call 800-643-4645, 24 hours a day. You may also request our introductory offer by writing to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Once again, that's Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. We invite you to join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at this same time. Thank you for watching today's program, and God bless you.